franktalks.com Check out the Frank Talks relationship column currently running in the Suburban Newspaper online magazine. To read more, please visit www.thesuburban.com. Remember to sign up for the Successful Marriage Secrets newsletter and get weekly tips about building a better, stronger, and loving marriage today. Sign up at www.franktalks.com now. This is an exclusive excerpt from the Stuff File program with Peter Anthony Holder. Relationship coach Frank Kermit is back on the show, and this time around we're talking about talking. Communication in a relationship. The lines of communication must be open in a relationship, but are there things you shouldn't talk about? Are there any third rail topics that can instantly fry the parties involved? Frank joins us on the line once again via Skype to Skype communications from here in Montreal. Hi, Frank. Hey, Peter. How you doing? Just tickety-boo. Thanks for being on the program with us once again. So I was reading this uh, article. So it's by a, a psychotherapist and author by the name of Mary Jo Rapini, who was listing uh, things to beware of, uh, hot button issues. And in talking off air before doing this with you, uh, you mentioned the fact that these really aren't taboo issues. Uh, it's it's just a matter of the way you you phrase it, right? Exactly. Now I can understand why she would write the article in that way because it's easier to give people very specific tools and rules to follow, as opposed to giving the in-depth explanation behind it. Right. Generally speaking, though, if we're talking about two people in a serious relationship, there really should be no topic that's too taboo to discuss, unless some, one of the individuals says, look, I really can't handle this topic. But discussions about exes, discussions about a person's past, telling a person to calm down, Telling a person the truth, even if that person may not like hearing the truth, is still very important and, I believe, necessary for the success of a long-term relationship. It's not the topic itself. It's the way it's brought up. Ah, I see. Uh, well, let's, I should list some of the things that she mentions in her article. And she says, uh, telling your partner to man up uh, or anything uh, you say that makes him feel less uh, the, of a man. That's one she mentions. Uh, telling her uh, she would look more sexy if, and you can fill in the blank, whatever that if might be. Uh, telling her to calm down when she's upset. Uh, rolling your eyes or sighing a sign of aggression or resentment. Those are just some of the things she mentions. But these things okay. do happen in relationships anyway, don't they? Oh, absolutely, and they're going to happen, but now let's look at each one, okay. and we can look at the underlying emotional needs behind them. First of all, telling a woman she would look sexier you know, if she did this or if she did that, doing it in that way is a criticism. However, expressing what it is you like is okay. What you can say is, what I really find sexy are these particular topics, these particular actions this particular type of wardrobe. I find this sexy is very different from saying you would be sexier if. So the topic itself, what I find sexy as a man or what any man would find sexy is an okay topic to discuss. It's the way it's brought up. When a woman tells a man, hey, you should man up. Well, let's remember that insulting your partner or telling your partner uh, anything that would make your partner... Um, that it, that is a, an attack on a person's character is never any good. However, you can say something like, it would make me feel more secure if I knew that you were able to deal with this situation. Do you have a plan? Right. One of the ones on the list that I, I, I tend to think might really be a red flag is someone saying, it doesn't matter which one of the party is involved, someone saying that uh, your partner isn't as smart as you. I mean, is there any way around that one? Well, I think that we have to look at the context. Just insulting someone and saying to somebody, I'm smarter than you, so there. Well, this is not a discussion point. And I, I don't want to just look at the Band-Aid solution of just don't say it. If there's an underlying attitude there of I'm, I'm superior than you, that's a problem. And constantly attacking someone like that is an act of abuse. That's emotional abuse when you're constantly telling someone, I'm smarter than you. 
However, if you want to point out to your partner, look, this is my area of specialty. This is my domain. I'm trying to give you some information here about something that I know about. If you're resistant to me, then there's an underlying issue for that. Mm. One of the ones I actually found very interesting on the list, I think just plays into the fact that you really, like, like anybody else, um, you really have to know your audience. And in this case, you really have to know your partner. And, and, and that is um, calling someone um, or teasing or calling someone playful names, which you might find playful, but they don't. You have to know them well enough to know whether they can handle something like that, right? Here we're talking about compatibility. Look, some people are playful by nature, and they'll do that with, a, with everyone. And if somebody is sensitive about a particular nickname or a particular subject that they don't want to be teased on, now we're talking about compatibility and boundaries. So it's not so much the idea that, well, you should never be playful. Uh, in this one case, I would agree with what was written, that if a person is very sensitive about a subject, it's something to stay away from. And that, again, is a matter of not being an abuser, an emotional abuser. Number 12 I also find very interesting. That's the last one on this particular list. And, and that is, and, and the way I'm going to phrase the question is, does one have to literally, from their, their, their mate's point of view, erase their past? Because number 12 is mentioning any fond times with an ex. The only exception, according to this writer, is uh, a widow or widower. I disagree with that completely, and here's why. Anytime you say, well, you should not have to talk about an ex, look, everybody has some kind of insecurity, but when that insecurity is blown out of proportion where you cannot handle the truth about your partner's past, that's a red flag. Okay. Now, and it's okay to talk. Let, let's be clear, though. It's okay to talk about a nice memory about an ex within context. Okay. So I then have a couple is going to, let's say... Sorry, go ahead. Let's say a couple is going to a very particular part of town, and they're trying to establish some, side of, uh, some sort of a romantic connection. That is not a time to say, oh, I've been here before with my ex, and it was so wonderful, and they're reliving it. That's not an appropriate context. However, if the question comes up, hey, you know, what kind of a relationship have you had in the past? I want to know because I'm thinking of taking us to the next level. That is a proper context to bring up the good and the bad aspects of past relationships. Okay, well, what about the other issue that comes up often in relationships? And, the, and that is uh, pictures. And I'm not talking about racy pictures of any kind. Just normal relationship uh, pictures that show you and an ex on a vacation, maybe with other members of her family or your family. I know people who um, personally want to get rid of all pictures they have with an ex. I know people who have new mates or, or wives or husbands who want their, their, their mate to get rid of pictures of an ex. But, but what if somebody in your relationship wants to get rid of the pictures and you, and you don't? Well, there's a difference between getting rid of mementos of a person's past and making sure that they're just not on display. Because everybody's got a past. And until that relationship that you're in right now gets serious, the person really doesn't have any say as to what you do with those mementos. Once you reach a point where you are very serious with somebody, now it becomes a matter of, well, what are the boundaries here? If someone does not want to get rid of past mementos, that's actually okay. However, keeping them handy where everybody can see them is a problem. Well, I understand the idea of not putting your exes up on the mantle, but if if you have a photo album that chronologically has your history, I don't necessarily see why someone has to be removed from it unless you yourself feel they should be removed from it. I mean, isn't that that person's choice? Well, we're looking at uh, let, okay, let's look at the example of a photo album. Yeah. All right. Photo album, chronological. Hey, and somebody was a part of their past, especially if they have children together. If they have children together, it's not like you're going to be able to come in and say, well, forget that person who happens to be the father or the mother of your children. Uh, you know, that photo album is uh, as much a part of the children's lives, too. So in something like that, no, you don't have to demand that those pictures be removed. If you're going to accept someone, you need to accept them and their past. 
Now, there's again, as you said, there's a difference. You don't want to necessarily see it displayed. If those photos of an X happen to be a screensaver on your computer, okay, we've got a little bit of a problem there. Exactly. Okay, exactly. but you have to understand, at this point in time, most people have some sort of past. And with the divorce rate being at 40%, it's unlikely that any demands that you make on a person saying you better get rid of all of these things from your past is going to be accepted with grace. The fact is you're dealing with people who have a past. You either accept it or you don't. And if you can't accept it, then you might need to do a little bit of personal growth in order to enter this world of dating and relationships. All good points as usual, Frank. It's always a pleasure to talk with you. Uh, people can find out more information by going to your website, right? That's right. They can go to franktalkswithaness.com, franktalks.com. I work internationally. I work with clients around the world through Skype, through the phone, and uh, I'm uh, very happy. My rates are very reasonable. So if you're interested in some personal growth and development, if you're having a struggle with dating and relationships, franktalks.com is the place to go. Thank you very much, Frank. Always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you, Peter. Always a pleasure. I look forward to the next time relationship coach Frank Kermit. You can check out his website at franktalks.com and you can go to my website at thestufffile.com go to the what's on page for this show which is show number 0270 and you'll find the link to his site. You've just heard an exclusive excerpt from the Stuff File program with Peter Anthony Holder. To hear any or all of the full hour long shows visit thestufffile.com Stuff is spelled S-T-U-P-H That's thestufffile.com a presentation of Flying Fish Communications. If you need help with your relationships, my buddy Frank, he's got some Frank.talks.com His advice is better than your mom's He knows what you're going through Cause Frank has been there too So log on to Frank.talks.com Frank.talks.com Stop being single. Remember to sign up for the Stop Being Single newsletter and get weekly tips about how to stop being single and how to start up a love life. Sign up at franktalks.com now. Need help with love, sex, dating, and relationships. Visit. 